Hey, Composite Gloves here, and today we're going to be talking about how a course does its job. And this one's going to be a lot more uh, thorough. It's really going to explain like how the thing does its job because we're going to be building one. And so this isn't going to be a super in detail one because that's way too much information at the get-go. I want to give you some stuff you can really get. So first, let's cover the most basic definition. Let me give you a demo real quick. So first, we have our original signal. Typical original signal, you know, something like that. And then we bring in uh, our chorus effect. Let me get something like that. And that's a pretty common, you know, chorus effect. And we see here we have some frequency controls, a basic delay control. And then if, uh, this is the, the chorus we're going to be building. The link will be in the description to this ensemble. If you own Reactor, you could pull it open. But basically, now we're going to ask ourselves, okay, what's happening? First, let's look at it on a... Uh, a big scale, a scale that most people are generally like laymen would be satisfied with in terms of they're not building courses, but they need to know how it generally works so they can use it. So chorus, of course, we have a choir. Let's say we have a choir. Oh, here's, our, here's our choir. Just imagine a choir. And then you are the person at the front. You, you want everyone in the choir to sing the same note. So you sing a note. You say, sing this note. La. And then everyone else is going la. And let's say that like, okay, when you're singing la, it's just you. And then when you sing, you say, I'm going to sing it, and then you guys come in after me. And so you sing, la, and then as soon as you start singing, everyone else goes, la, like this whole roar of la's up here. And your sound gets washed out because everyone's trying to sing the exact same la that you're singing, but they're all slightly out of tune. Maybe this person over here is flat. Uh, more often than not and this person over here is sharp more often than not and they vary and they're trying to be in tune with you But we're humans. We just can't quite do it and the result creates a choir sound We're all getting pretty close to the same goal, but there's still this variation. So that's a general chorus description And so if we were to look at that each one of these lines now the reason I say they come in after you is because in the analog land we can give any piece of audio to a chorus and the chorus is basically going to sing our thing, but with different pitch tunings, right? Uh, I'm, it'll, maybe I'm playing a drum loop, and then it'll play the drum loop slightly flat and sharp, and it will vary it. And so this can get quite complicated. You can get actually pretty intricate with how you generate this variation. We're sticking to like just bare bones basic right now. So, okay, As we're going to create this variation. The chorus, though, you know, in a choir, you can all sing the same note at the same time if you've agreed on it ahead of time, right? You say, we're going to sing this piece of music. Here are the notes. And you know all the notes before you're going to sing them. So it works out. Uh, in audio, not so. So we are going to delay our audio by tiny, tiny amounts. So, so small, um, the effect will be the same as chorusing. It's like they come in, as soon as you start singing law, they start singing law, almost as if it was at the same time. But in reality, there was a super small delay, a very small delay. And so that's how we get away with it in audio. We give it a drum loop, and then the delay from the other singers happens very, very quickly. So here's our original signal. This is our goal, right? We say, we say dear analog signal, please sing this note. And so... Uh, what we do is we delay and I've got three delay lines here Number one is our original and then we have two three four and here are our delays down here two three four You see we have three delays. We'll talk about all this stuff each component We'll talk about in detail, but right now we need a solid grip on what's happening. So, okay, there's our delays and, and we're delaying things and uh, As we do that we could bring in let's say we bring in our first voice So we have two people singing, but they're slightly out of tune and we see that's varying. Well, let's say, oh, well, singer two, please uh, sing my note. Let's see what exactly what we're getting out of singer two. And we say, oh, well, this thing is shrinking and stretching. It's getting bigger and smaller. And we're going to be, the why of why this works is something that I've found people skip. So we're going to be spending a whole video just on that. But uh, yeah, so we see, okay, okay, this is, this is varying. And then let's say, okay, well, singer three, will you please sing what note, uh, that note. And we notice that that's, that's also shrinking and stretching, but it's different than singer two. And then we can do the same as singer four. Well, that's what these frequency controls control. A lot of times you'll also see a depth control, which controls the amplitude, how loud that signal is. For us, those are right here. They're on our mixer. So we can bring down the impact singer two has on our sound and uh, sort of reduce that effect. 
And then these are oftentimes, you'll see frequency knobs on all sorts of things. So you can add a bunch of controls. You begin to see like, oh, that's what those controls do on uh, different choruses. So, okay, uh, we've got a delay and each one is singing slightly out of tune or, or playing it differently out of tune. And it's a delay. So you might be going, okay, well, we have our original and then this thing comes in and it's it's been delayed and that allows its pitch to change. That's kind of strange. But we get a cool result. So let's talk about, you know, what exactly is happening here. So this delay, I'm hitting the note and then literally like just fractions of a second, milliseconds, even smaller, our, uh, our sound comes out and it's singing slightly out of tune. Well, this delay is uh, what happens is, okay, so here's our delay. So our sound, our input sound comes in. It goes out to a to it just goes straight out so it comes into this mixer and the mixer just shoots it straight out so it goes out unaffected just poof, there you go i do reduce the amplitude because uh it's quite loud with everything going on at the same time so but our signal goes straight out after that and then we have here a delay line this delay is oh something we're going to address later on down the road it's not important for this one but this delay is feeding other delays. These are the delays that we're concerned about. As far as we're concerned, we could remove this delay from the equation and just be working with these delays. So this input could go straight to these delays. Now, each delay is one of our singers. And we have our delay time being controlled by a sine wave. So we see here we have a sine wave controlling our delay. Uh, and that's how much it delays. So... We're going to be talking about this in more detail, but essentially what's happening is we have 44,100 samples a second. This is digital audio. I expect you to know about that. I have a whole series on it if you need a refresher. And we're going to be talking about this on a, a lot more fundamental of a level in the, in the next coming videos anyways on the DSP. So what's happening is we have a delay and all these samples... Um, each sample represents a moment in time on our waveform, right? Well, we can shift these samples over back and forth while our larger stream of samples is going out. The result is as we shift, like let's say we have like five samples going back and forth. Well, it's going to stretch and shrink our waveform as we do that. And now, right now we're just going to sort of accept that. We'll look at more of why this works in the next video. And also if you, if you have reactor again, um, the, the, there's a text tutorial. I'm going to be using the same analogy only. I'll be like drawing out pictures and explaining as I go. So that's, what's going on there. We have this, we're delaying it and this delay causes the pitch shift. And so that's what the chorus is doing. There's actually a delay part. And depending on how you get this delay to delay your audio can really affect things. I mean, we could throw in filters in the middle of our delays. I mean, we, we could get way more cool than what we're doing right now, but we're just doing basic, basic stuff. So then each delay line uh, feeds our, our filter. So we're changing the pitch. And that's being caused by our delay. And then that's going out and getting mixed with our dry signal. Well, since it's, since it's out of phase with our, our signal, because the period of the waveform is changing, um, it's literally a pitch change. That's why it's called chorusing. It's the same effect as what a chorus would do or choir would do. And then we send it out and then we just hear it. We don't do anything fancy after that. That's like, this is like the guts of what a chorus is doing. And so now our next questions are, well, what is all this jazz? Um, what's this guy? This, this, uh, this one here is, uh, it's pretty optional. Um, you can get, uh, phasers, flangers, other, other effects, but they require some feedback. So they're a little bit different of a deal, but something that does set them apart is sort of the use. This, you can view this if, if you're, if you can make sense of this right now, you can view this as basically a static phase offset start switch. That's all I'm going to say about that. We'll, we'll talk about this later on down the line. Again, it's also covered in this, in the text tutorial here, but in a nutshell, so just a basic review, we have an original signal. Our original signal is then delayed by some super small amount. In this case, by a sine wave. So it gets delayed and we do this multiple times. We, you see that this comes out multiple times. We combine all these things and because it's getting delayed, all the pitch variation is slightly different and we put them back together since they're all out of phase, um, we get a effect like a choir. So that's how a chorus works. And we're gonna be delving more and more into this explanation and why 
certain things hooked up a certain way respond the way they do. And I am pretty excited to do the next tutorials. This stuff's really interesting to me. All sorts of really cool things begin to pop up as you mess with this sort of stuff. Um, but it's really nice to have a guide. So if you have any questions about this thus far, let me know. Subscribe, support me on Patreon. It greatly enables me to continue to make videos like this. And have a blessed day.